From the city that never sleeps to the neighborhood you grew up in, we've got the music to make you feel good. It's real R&B on the internet. Las Vegas Hot Radio, the heart and soul of Las Vegas music. You're listening to What's Up Las Vegas right here on LasVegasHotRadio.com. when I start telling you all the different things that he's done. You're listening to What's Up Las Vegas on LasVegasHotRadio.com. We'll be right back after this. Las Vegas Hot Radio for the mature audience. Playing music from all your favorites, like Charlie Wilson. Ella May. Bruno Mars And Drake This is Real R&B Las Vegas Hot Radio The heart and soul of Las Vegas music What's up, Las Vegas Hot Radio? How are you? All right. So, you guys probably recognize Rashawn from ER. He was in Tales from the Crypt, Family Matters. All those fun 90s shows. Yeah. I was on it. Uh, the movie Hook with uh, Robin Williams, Dustin Hoffman, uh, Julia Roberts. Amazing cast. Wow, that's quite a resume. So, you are working on a documentary? Well, right now I'm actually doing a new TV series based off of an independent movie that I wrote, produced, and directed back in 2011 called 24 Hours in Las Vegas. And it's basically about a bunch of friends that come to Vegas and have a lot of fun every weekend in Vegas for just 24 hours. They make away with a lot of money (laughs) out here every weekend, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Or what do you feel put you on the map or that you're most known for and that you you really enjoyed the most? I originally got started because my father was a lead singer for an oldies group called The Drifters. He was the lead singer for over 40 years. What was his name? Clayton Hammond. Okay. He wrote a bunch of big hit songs throughout the late 50s and 1960s. A huge hit that a lot of people at home would know. A song called Part Time Love, which was re-recorded by many, many artists. When I was about four years old, my father had a big contract at the Bally's Hotel and Casino Mm -hmm. and I would come here with my mom and my older brothers and we would see him perform and big stars like Frank Sinatra or Dean Martin or Tony Bennett would stop by to see the show and at that time I was a huge fan and I still am of Michael Jackson. I would dress up in my entire Michael Jackson attire (laughs) with my little glove. Oh that would be something And one particular night uh, around the mid 1980s Uh, My father's manager, which was also the manager to Mr. Jay Leno of uh, The Tonight Show fame, uh, Freddie Boom Boom Cannon, he was there watching my dad's show, and he saw me kind of moving around and dancing. And I went up to my dad, and I begged him to put me in the show. And my father reluctantly put me on the stage for about three minutes, and I got up there and saw about a 1,000 people in the uh, theater and got a chance to do a little bit of my dancing. And right after... After they signed me for a contract and from there I did about a dozen or so commercials uh, big commercials that were shown globally for a lot of brands Little Caesars Pizza Skittles Pepsi whatnot and from that uh, Steven Spielberg the famous writer producer director saw me and called me in to audition for a new Peter Pan movie he was doing called Hook with Robin Williams Dustin yes. Hoffman uh, Julia Roberts yeah. And after five minutes
minutes of being there. It was like pure magic. He contacted me back about a day or so later and booked me and hired me to be in the feature film just to say one line. My very first day uh, on set, he looked at me and smiled and said, son, I'm gonna make you a star. He winded up giving me over 107 lines for the movie. I wow. went from working from one day to working for about, I think, 115 days on the set. Totally uh, awesome. With just Robin Williams and myself, and the rest is history. Uh, from there, I was in a plethora of television shows and series from uh, ABC, NBC, CBS to uh, Nickelodeon. So, Rashawn, as I understand it, you're also a magician. I've been a magician uh, since I was a little kid. Just like uh, most kids, I would dabble with the little magic kits you get for Christmas or your birthday. But uh, by the time I was uh, nine or ten years old, I took it extremely seriously and uh, kept practicing daily. By the time I was 13, I was invited to join the Magic Castle Junior Group out in Hollywood, California, which is like the biggest thing for all magicians. Every magician that has a show in Las Vegas or New York or around the world, they started at the Magic Castle. After a few years of practicing, by the age of 16, I was hired to do a about 21 shows there and I did my my 21 shows and then got invited to do uh, a show over at Harris Hotel uh, in Las Vegas for about four years and moved over to the Frontier Hotel then Casino Royale then the Riviera Hotel and Casino then I took my act on the road I've toured all throughout Europe I've gone to Paris I've gone to Japan and uh, to this very day about maybe about about four months out of the year, I take my show on the uh, road, and I, I do about 250 shows a year, doing my uh, music and uh, magic show with my my live beautiful birds uh, and exotic geek. You're listening to What's Up Las Vegas on LasVegasHotRadio.com. We'll be right back after this. Las Vegas Hot Radio, where the stars shine, 24/7. We're the new home for adult R&B and hip hop. We're Las Vegas Hot Radio, the heart and soul of Las Vegas music. You're listening to What's Up Las Vegas on LasVegasHotRadio.com. Oh, it's your girl Linnell, and I'm here with Rashawn Hammond. When I was a kid, I used to beg my grandmother all the time to teach me how to play the piano. My grandmother really didn't have patience to teach anybody, but I was amazed that my grandmother taught Mr. Little Richard how to play the piano. So she taught Little Richard? She wouldn't teach me, <laughs> and I met and worked with Little Richard back in 1994 on a TV series that I was on for a couple of years called America's Funniest People with Tani Katane and David Coulier from Full House. And I was able to sit with Richard for a few hours. He played the piano and he would crack jokes and talk about my grandmother <laughs> and their time together. But at that time, Little Richard had a kids album out. I think it was called Little Itsy Bitsy Spider. And he would do all those classic songs from different animated movies and whatnot. But I'll never forget, we had a blast. And then at the end, Little Richard had a Bible, a little Bible that he gave to me. And I he have autographed one. it. I have and one. he autographed one for my grandmother. He gave me and, one. And he had his picture on there. Yes. And it would be him like yes. that. And he was a younger him. And he exactly. was. Exactly. Exactly. I had him. I was a flight attendant. And he was on uh, my flight. I believe we were going uh, to Paris. Okay. Yes. Okay. And um, he didn't take pictures, though. He did not. He did not. He did he not. Said, he, in fact, he said, we don't make pictures, baby. <laughs> exactly, exactly. He, I, I couldn't get a photo with him, but to this day, I'm so happy and so blessed. Yes. I still have video footage of him and I together on that yes. series. So his, his boots. They were in the closet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Incredible times. So, Rashawn, funny scene in the movie, 24 Hours in Las Vegas. Tell us about it. Oh, wow. There, uh, well, we, I know, 
The whole movie's funny, but the funniest whole movie. Scene. Um, one of the funniest scenes. Oh wow! You said it something went, about Caesars, I think. Well, we shot a bunch of scenes over at Caesars Palace, and the idea was a young lady that I fell in love with while I'm in Las Vegas for the 24 hours. I think that she's fallen for me, and I'm kind of falling for her. She turns out to work uh, kind of inside the mob. She comes to kill me at the end of the movie, and at the very end, she pulls out a gun to shoot me, (laughs) and myself trying to dodge the bullets, I fall off of the top of the casino and fall a few dozen or so stories into the swimming pool. Oh, wow. That had to be fun to shoot, or is that some really fancy Well, we shot it around December. You didn't actually jump into the pool. I did. I jumped into the pool, no stunt doubles. There was some top of the building? There was some green screen work, but I really went to the top. Of the casino, wow. and I did it five times where I had to jump off the top and land in a little square pool, uh-huh. and it was very dangerous, and I did it, and it hurt a little bit, <laughs> but I think the funniest thing was looking at the outtakes. I had no stunt double. We, we did a, it was a low-budget independent oh, film, oh, wow. and the young lady that had to pretend to shoot me, she was so stunned because I think she thought the entire time that we were joking about me falling off into the pool and the outtakes of her looking <laughs> at me and then looking at the camera and then looking down and seeing me fall and, and I go face first and hit the water. Wow. And I mean, it's it's December here in Vegas. Oh my goodness. It was cold. The pool wasn't warmed. Uh, That's called break a leg. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So I did it. I got through it. But uh, for the actors involved, that had to be the craziest and maybe the funniest thing for them. I know it woke me up. Oh, wow. And I then can't to do wait it. To see it. Definitely. I, definitely. I won't wait. be doing it on the TV show. <laughs> Maybe something a little similar, but I'm going to stay a little bit more warm. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to see it. Rashawn, once again, thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Oh, you too. Thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen. Join us next week on What's Up Las Vegas with your host, Linnell Baker.